Hi, this is Kai Werner with Confluent and I will take a look at Apache Flink and why it is such a popular stream processor used together with Apache Kafka. Real-time data beats slow data. This is why just building data pipelines from your databases to your data warehouse or your data lake is not good enough. First, let's start with an overview about data streaming and your data stack. So if you take a look at this, these are all your databases and cloud services and business applications. You generate a lot of events here from payments, from locations, from clicks, from orders. Kafka became the de facto standard for data streaming, where you build data pipelines between the different systems. And with its connector ecosystem, Kafka can even integrate out of the box to these other applications, databases, and data warehouses, no matter if they are more legacy applications or if it is really cloud-native serverless offerings. However, with streaming alone, you won't get to analyze, process, or act on these events until they land in the sync systems. And this is why we need to talk about stream processing versus batch processing today. First of all, let's assume this is your data warehouse. And let's get started with batch processing as a discussion point. Inside a data warehouse, you have a bunch of events accumulated and waiting to be processed. Traditionally, how this works is that you have fixed time intervals and you take a lot of the data and process it. For example, in this case, one batch process takes 30 minutes and it might even take much longer. And then you take the next batch process and so on. So this is called batch processing. A popular framework for that is Apache Spark, even for big data sets. However, the big problem with batch processing is that the data is already stale when you process it. Moving the data up the stack more to direct integration with Kafka and real-time data streaming, you can add a lot of value here because you process the events when they are ingested and not when it's too late, like when the fraud already happened or when the machine already broke. So let's take a look at stream processing. The big difference here compared to batch processing is that you continuously process the data while the data is fed into the system from different data sources. And with this, you can continually take action as soon as an event happens in real time. And this is really much more powerful. And as I said in the beginning, real-time data beats slow data. That's true for almost every use case across all industries. And you can enable any kind of application like event-driven systems, real-time analytics, or streaming data pipelines more in real time. So this is called stream processing. Now talking about stream processing, we need to talk about Apache Flink. Flink is a very popular stream processor used by companies such as Apple, Netflix, Alibaba, and Uber, because it comes with several different advantages. Let's talk about them. The first big advantage is performance. Flink provides a very powerful and scalable runtime engine in a distributed manner, which means that you can process millions or even billions of events in real time, and you can do stateless and stateful processing, which is really powerful and scalable. Second, however, as important is resiliency. Well, things fail over time, right? And therefore, a distributed system is great for scale, but it also needs to be reliable so that you can do failure recovery and Flink has functions like checkpoints so that you can make sure your business continues even if you have some problems somewhere in the infrastructure or networks or in the business applications. Third, we need to talk about APIs. Because Apache Flink is available for multiple languages, many people use ANSI SQL, so the same you use for your Oracle database. Others use Java or Python to write streaming applications. So you have the freedom of choice to build your applications with Flink. And last but not least, we need to talk about unified stream and batch. Reality is that most use cases combine real-time data with historical data to add the most value out of that. And this is exactly where Flink shines. And in some cases, you don't do it in real time with a stream processing app, but actually you need to still do some batch logic. And this is the great thing about Flink because it unifies stream and batch processing in a single API. From an architectural perspective, it's really important to understand that Flink is separated from Apache Kafka. So in this case, Apache Kafka provides the event store, the storage, and feeds the events into Apache Flink, where the compute happens. 
This is really important, right? Because since compute and storage are disaggregated, you can scale each of them independently for more efficient use of resources. Now you have seen how powerful Apache Flink is, especially in the combination with Apache Kafka. Next, we want to take a look into Flink's architecture. Here we will start from the developer perspective. So this guy is the developer. And let's say we want to build a ride-sharing app. This is perfect for stream processing because it's not just about real-time and scale, but also about correlating data from different sources. So the Flink developer writes the code with one of the different Flink APIs. Could be SQL or Java or Python. Your Flink application gets translated into a job graph, which is a data processing pipeline with each node representing a step in the processing logic. This is how this looks like. The great benefit of Flink's architecture is that multiple streams can be processed in parallel, which is important for maintaining scalability. So now when we want to submit such a job, let's take a look at the Flink cluster and how that looks like. Within the Flink architecture, once the job graph is submitted, the job manager accepts it and manages a cluster of task managers to execute the job graph. So here's the job manager. And now we also have multiple task managers in this distributed system. As you see in this picture here on a very high level, Flink is a distributed system with the ability to scale horizontally. The job manager here also includes other components like a dispatcher that provides a REST API to submit a job graph, a scheduler that assigns tasks to task slots, and a checkpoint coordinator that enables fault tolerance. On the other side, each one of these task managers includes memory and network managers to communicate and coordinate with the other task managers. And because in a distributed system, there's a lot of communication, not just between the task managers, but of course also with the job managers. So this all sounds very complex, right? And honestly, it is. Kafka already is a distributed system that is really hard to operate on your own, especially or at least if you want to have a reliable infrastructure with no downtime or data loss. Apache Flink is even more interesting because it also keeps the state of the applications even long term. So this can even store state for hours or days. And as you can imagine, that's then even harder to operate at scale in such a distributed system. So it can feel a little bit daunting to get started with Flink. And that's why we recommend Flink as a fully managed service. So this is the cloud offering. You can focus as a developer on the application, you write the app, and you just deploy it into the serverless offering. And all the details under the hood are abstracted away. And even better than that, in the serverless cloud offering, you can leverage Flink on a consumption basis. You can scale up and down as you need. So as a developer, you start small and then you scale your service. Maybe you also have some peak. And if you don't need it anymore, you can even scale down to zero and maybe start later again. So this is really how our serverless offering works. And this is the benefit of leveraging Apache Flink as a fully managed offering. Confluent makes Flink not only easier to manage, but also easier to develop, as I just discussed here. So it makes it suitable for companies of any size, not just the big names we mentioned earlier with lots of resources. And actually, the same goes true for Apache Kafka, where the real value actually then comes when you combine Kafka and Flink together to have an end-to-end -end data streaming pipeline where you connect to other source systems, build stream processing applications, and also feed data into other external systems like databases, data lakes, and data warehouses. And all of the streaming platform is integrated into one fully managed service with data governance, security, mission critical support, and other capabilities built into the platform. If you want to experience an end-to-end -end unified and fully managed platform, like I discussed it here today around Kafka and Flink, then you should head to Confluent Cloud and try it out with free credits. We also have great tutorials on developer.confluent.io where you can learn more for free. I hope you learned something from this video and enjoy other videos from Confluent. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Kai Werner with Confluent. <laughs>